Today on Living Streams. Receiving is done in the spirit, having is done in the physical. What you have not received in the spirit, you can't have in the physical. When God is not pleased, miracles are not possible. Your wealth is not determined by what you receive. It's by what you give, what you invest, what you sow. Good marriage is automatic salvation of your children. When your marriage is bad, your children are lost. And now to the word. Habakkuk 3 verse 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower to hear or to watch to see what he will say unto me, what I shall and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read at it. For the vision, everybody read verse 3. One to go. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Until there is vision, there cannot be direction. It is vision that gives us direction. Vision is, has to do with what you see. This time around, what you see spiritually. What you see in the eyes of your spirit. What you see in your mind's eyes. That now determines your direction. The most horrible thing to happen to anybody is to waste your time and waste your life in the wrong direction. You will not waste your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Until your headlight is sharp enough, you can't travel fast enough. So vision gives you speed. Until your headlight as a driver is bright enough, you can't travel fast enough. So vision is symbolic of speed. It what gives speed. The consequence of vision is speed. A boy, a, two young men got into the university. One is very clear what he wants to, he wants to have a two one or a, uh, a first class before he leaves. You will notice that he will finish that school without one carryover. While the other person is busy doing summer, winter, autumn, and spring. Plus Hamatan. Why? Because his vision was not clear. He had time to do other things. They distracted him. His grades dropped. He failed a few courses and so on. The man who has vision for first class is not thinking about what course he will fail. He's thinking of how high the score, the score can be. Failure is out of the radar. So when vision is clear, speed, direction is established, and speed is guaranteed. Hallelujah. So the lack of direction is the consequence of lack of vision. But you must know clearly what you want to have vision for. Some people, you ask them, what vision do you have? When they begin to tell you the things they want to have vision for, a very, very obscure things that by the time you finish accomplishing them, your life has still not made progress. You still not established any progress. So what kind of vision should you have? Three aspects of vision. Faith, family, and finance. So three of them are very critical. They go hand in hand. And you cannot overemphasize anyone. You can't underemphasize anyone. Hallelujah. Why faith? Faith is the only way we receive from God. Faith is the only way. There's no other way we receive from God. For without faith, it is what? You should stop there. I know you add to please God. But, the, you know, if we stop as impossible, it makes sense. For without faith, it is impossible. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible. But you know what Jesus said? He said, all things are possible to him that has faith or him that believeth. There are only two people to, for whom all things are possible. God with whom nothing shall be impossible and to him that has faith. That should be Mark chapter 9. Jesus made that statement. The man said, Lord, if you can do anything, help us. And Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believe. He said, help you know, lo, 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 help my unbelief. Because he knew there was some unbelief still there. So without faith, it is impossible to get miracles, to get blessings, to get favor, to please God. When God is not pleased, miracles are not possible. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, I think it says, Be ye followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Be followers of them 
who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So promises are inherited by faith. God has promised, oh, yes. Will he do it? Yes. What is the way he will do it? Through faith. That's why for every person who came to Jesus and got a healing, what did Jesus say to them? Your faith has made you whole. Why did he say my power has made you whole? The power is a constant. The faith is the variable. The constant is always, the power is always there. But many times there is no faith to tap into the power. That's the problem. Hallelujah. Somebody has elephantiasis. It can be healed. But you need the faith. So there are people that are entering into 2018 now and they have all kinds of goals. Many have not plotted goals to build their faith. Do you know that? No goals to raise your faith. Because there are things you should have received last year you didn't receive. What prevented you was the shortage of faith. That's the truth. The shortage of faith. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So you need to build faith. Because you can't receive anything from God without faith. James chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. He said, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And he says in verse 7, let not that man think that you are wavering. Let, don't think you shall receive anything of the Lord. Faith is critical because faith is the lifestyle of God. How many of you know God lives by faith? <laughs> when Jesus caused the fig tree in Mark chapter 11, when they came back the next day and saw the fig tree dried up, they said, Master, the tree you, 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 you caused, Peter is an agriculturist, he's a farmer by nature. He said he's dried up from the root. How did he know? He experienced. He's dried up from the root. And Jesus said to them in the next verse, he said, unto them have faith in God and somebody will just read it normal if you read that thing from Bible in basic English and Jesus answered and said unto them have God's faith have God's faith the, the message Bible breaks it down a little bit see how the message Bible puts it Jesus said Jesus was matter of fact he said embrace this God life really embrace it in other words this is how God lives. Whenever he wants anything done, he speaks and it is done. Why? Because faith speaks to get things done. God created the world by speaking. That's faith. He says in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, he shall have whatsoever he say. So if you shall say to anything, that's faith. You speak to get things done. And you shall know that. He said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Sound somehow, how can I receive and have? Receiving is done in the spirit. Having is done in the physical. What you have not received in the spirit, you can't have in the physical. And you receive it by faith. You receive it by faith. So faith is critical. Let me show you. Somebody's faith in the Bible. Somebody demonstrated faith. Matthew 8 verse 5 to 13. He demonstrated faith very powerfully. The centurion sent to tell Jesus to come and heal his servant. And Jesus went. And when Jesus was on the way, see verse 6. Let's see verse 6. And saying, they said, he said, please come and heal my servant. He lied at home sick of the past. He grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. When the centurion heard that Jesus was coming, everybody read what the centurion said to Jesus. Read, one to go. I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But do what? Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The master asked why. He said, this is the reason I want you to speak. Read, go. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I said to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. What he was saying to Jesus is, you are a man of authority. 
Just like I'm a man of authority, I have never spoken to any servant to go and he disobeyed me. And my orgas never sent me and he disobeyed. You are the orga of all orgas. Speak, my servant to be healed. That was heavy. Jesus said, I've never seen this kind of faith before in Israel. He said, as you have believed, so let it be unto you. And that's what happened. Faith. Hallelujah. So what made you fall short of receiving from God? Faith. Faith shortage. That's why Jesus will always say, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. In other words, it's not really about me. If you have faith in what I have, in what I carry, you can get whatever you want. So this year, plan to build your faith. Give, find direction for your faith. Have a vision to give direction to your faith. Build your faith so you can receive more. How do you build your faith? By the word. Romans 8, uh, uh, 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more word you have, the more faith you receive. More faith you receive, the more you can receive from God. Very simple. When you see people listening to the word of God, they're not playing, no. they're building their faith. They're building their faith. The second way to build your faith is Jude verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The more you pray, especially in the Holy Ghost, in the spirit, the more your faith is built. I talked about it in the last service. The more prayer. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse, verse 4, it says, he that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That you are charging your faith. You are, that word edifies the word charge. You are charging your faith. Okay? Hallelujah. Plan to increase your prayer life so your faith can increase and your, re your reception or receptivity, whatever it is, can increase. <laughs> the third way to build your faith, company with people of faith. Company with people of faith. Keep company with faith people. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, He that walks with the wise shall be wise. So he that walks with the faith field shall be full of faith. Hallelujah. If you walk with, with, with people who are full of faith, you will be full of faith. And Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, it says, Be followers of them who through faith and patience uh, inherit the promises. Hallelujah. The next thing we want to talk about is family. Somebody say family. That's something you must have a vision for this year. Plot a vision and direction for your family. Your father, your mother, your siblings. You must put them in your prayer radar. If you are born again, you are saved. How many of them are born again and saved? Why are you comfortable that your siblings, your parents are not saved? You are not sure if they die, they will go to heaven. Why did God save you? God saved you so that through you, he can reach your people. God is a systematic God. The Bible says he sets them in families. So what does he do? He picks one person from one family, get them saved. Pick what's it. So through you, salvation can spread into your family. Through you, healing can spread into your family. God planted me there because so that through me, my family can see the light. Salvation can spread to every member. Let me say this to every believer. It's a shame. One year, two years, three years of being born again, four years. No, your family members are all not saved. It's as if you are not totally saved. That's how it is. It's as if you are not completely saved. Because it's a disappointment to the almighty God. Why did I put you there? Ezekiel 22 verse 30, he said, I sought for a man among them to form the hedge and stand in the gap for me. God wants to use a man as a bridge so he can pass through you. That's why he saved you first. To plan for your family. The best way to plan for your family, if for your immediate family or your nuclear family, is by having a good marriage. Someone say good marriage. Good marriage is automatic salvation of your children. When your marriage is bad, your children are lost. Almost totally lost. Walk on the marriage and you get a good family. You cannot have a bad marriage and have a united family. Your family will decline. It will fall apart. Praise the name of the Lord. Make, make sure your spouse is happy. Make sure your husband is happy. Make sure your wife is happy. 
Don't be living a scattered life. Creating civil war in your house. And you expect, see, this year, make up your mind. There will be more peace in my house than ever before. That's a good goal. That's a good vision. That's a good direction. When there is peace, wealth follows it. Do you know another meaning for the word peace is shalom. Shalom also means wealth. Wealth. So where there is peace, there is wealth. Which nation is in war and they are building inside war? Which nation have you seen like that? Rockets are flying. And contractors are building. They don't build in war time. They only build in peace time. Praise the name of the Lord. Who is with me here today? Somebody say family. Say family. Family is your stabilizer. When all is said and done, that's where you go to. When God asked Noah, he said, you have I found righteous before me. He didn't bring him alone to the ark. He carried his sons, his wife, his son's wives. God is a family God. Hallelujah. And when God wanted to save Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah, he wanted to save the entire family. Just that his wife. God is a family God. Everybody say after me, say God is a family God. He saves families. He doesn't just save individuals. So, if your family is not safe, it's a minus for you. It's not a good thing. It's not a good report card. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Every member of my family, they are all saved. My father died a born again Christian. My mother is saved. I am her pastor right now. <laughs> hallelujah. My, 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 my brothers, my sisters, they are all saved. In fact, they are all in ministry. They were not saved when I got born again. I prayed them into salvation so that nobody is lost in your family. Nobody shall be lost in your family in Jesus' name. When God was bringing Israel out of Egypt, he said they should kill a lamb. It, family by family, is it not so? House by house. So God never planned that one member of a family will save and others are not saved. So your project this year, make sure no member of your family is still in sin. I don't care how bad they are in sin. By your prayer, they will come out. There's nothing as powerful as a family member interceding for another family member. Outsider may not do it as effectively as a family member. Praise God. Well, let's jump from there to talk of finance. Money answers all things. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19. Finance. It's not the devil that said the statement. It was God. Money answers all things. So if your finances are bad, then your family will suffer. Your faith will be ridiculed. There is need for financial intelligence for your family or for your finances to improve in any way. Ignorance is the reason for suffering. Some of my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of finances on how to manage finances. If when money enters your hand, what you think of is what to buy, you are financially foolish. Financially what? Foolish. Financial intelligence says as money enters, where does it go to first? Huh? <laughs> Where does it go first? Bank. I'm speaking in English. But the money must land. The money has not landed. If it doesn't enter the bank, oh. it has not. It's still in the air. It must land. Then there you write. You, you write off your tithe. You pay yourself. That's financial intelligence. Pay yourself means savings. Huh? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Finance critical. So pay yourself. Save. And then deduct all important expenses. I don't I imagine how somebody, you know you, your rent will be due in how many uh, months time. And there is no savings for your rent. You are not financially intelligent. You will end up borrowing. And the borrower is servant to the lender. You become a slave. Yeah? Or you are living in a landlord house and they just land you. You just landed this heavy money. Five million naira. Next thing you buy a Honda Accord. And your rent, this is like December, no, so January. Your rent is due by June. Your landlord will do Thanksgiving for you. And your next rent is double. How can you have Honda Accord? You don't have a house. You should be bulalarized. You should be flogged. Some people 
whose wife will be pregnant? The pregnancy grow to two months, three months, four months. No plan. Nine months, they begin to hustle to borrow. Shouldn't they box your face? Because the pregnancy gave you nine months notice. How many months? Nine months warning. I'm coming, oh. I'm coming, oh. Your wife wants to pass in the door. It can't pass. It's notice. And you didn't plan. You say, I thought it was not going to be CS. Don't you know that everything, anything is possible? When you are saving, save for CS. Don't save for normal delivery. So if it's normal delivery, you have change. No be so. You buy shawarma for your wife on the road as you are going. Then you can buy the two tires of your car that have spoiled to commemorate the arrival of the child. Hallelujah. Eh? Then put out percentage for your debt if you are owing. Put up, ask, promise your debt, your creditor, I will be paying you 20% or how many percent of my income every month. R put it in writing, which means I will finish it by social time. Not that you are learning from pillar to post, they call you just doctor. You don't, you don't do that. Eh? Program your debt. That's intelligence. Sit down, draw your balance sheet. See, the balance sheet is too tough. It's too tough. My brother, it's tough. But life is tougher without. You know what I'm saying? When you balance on paper, you'll be balanced outside. You don't go out of balance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mike Budok said. If you want to be really rich, you must read the number of books that, on finance that equals your age. So if you are 40, you must have read 40 books on finance. Even though I have not read enough like that, but I agree with what he says. That finance is that important. It is books I have read that move my finances up. It's not prayer. You know what I'm saying, no? Huh? Or reading the book. I was not even trying to read one finance book, hoping to finish the book. I didn't reach half. I say, eh, so what this man is saying is true. I close the book. I call my bank. Excuse me, bank. From today, this, 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 this. Open this account. I don't want checkbook. I don't want ATM card. I don't want this. Other. That was when my financial life began to improve. That's when I knew I had capacity to grow in wealth. Can you imagine that? Buy books. So get books. Read books on finance. And say, so this book or this book. I want to read books on Holy Ghost, fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost is hot. The fire of the Holy Ghost is, when you finish the fire of the Holy Ghost, you will eat food, though, and if there is no food, your eye will shine. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But there is another angle of finance called seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. What people don't realize is that every time you sow a seed, which is a spiritual thing, you are creating a future. You are creating another season. You are so, in my life, I create multiple seasons. Whenever you sow seed, you are creating another season. You are creating new season. You can't be poor. You don't have to wait. See, they say, today we want to raise money for so, 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 so. So we want to raise money. Who will give? Who will give? Don't wait to, for them. Be giving. Be, be, a, be a, how do they call it? Preemptive giver. Your wealth is not determined by what you receive. It's by what you give, what you invest, what you sow. Especially for us pastors. I said we want to be a beggarly pastor. We want to go around begging people. You know, just come around. Give them prophecy so they can give you money. We, are not, we don't belong to that order. We practice covenant principles so we can stay afloat. Hallelujah. Eh? <laughs> so, you should give to the poor. If you like give to all the poor in Nigeria, come back next year, they will all be poor again. You know what I tell you? They will be poor again. The poor don't need handouts as much as they need the gospel. All of us were poor before. I've drank Gary. I've drank Gary to the point that if you cut my blood, you see Gary. As in, you know, Gary water. That's in carbohydrate. <laughs> yes, that's how poor. We were so poor. You know our house in Eket now? We were so poor, we couldn't have, afford water to drink the Gary. So we drank the gari from rainwater that fell from decking into a spirogyra container full of algae. And Eket rain is not rain, it's acid. I'm sure you know that now. There is rain, does rain fall in Eket? 
that gas flaring. Does that make it? Mobi had to, had to roof almost everybody's house in Eketo. They were, they, they were sued. Because you look from Eketo, all roofs in Eketo are brown. God see of gas flaring. Praise the Lord. That's what we're drinking. The, the gas water plus the decking plus the algae. The sparrow jara will now say, when we, when we take you say, uh, the key black man. We we'll drink honestly, it's a miracle that we survive. If I go and drink it now, I'll be sick. Because level has changed. You know why a madman doesn't die? He's eating from the gutter. Go and go and taste from the gutter. You will now have cholera plus meningitis plus uh, what's the other one? <laughs> you even have HIV on top. <laughs> he giveth grace to the madman. He strengthened his enzymes. That no matter what he eats, he's still alive. Go and try it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Grow your giving to God. I will never buy a thing of the amount I've not given to God as an offering. It's an abomination. Welcome back. Welcome back. I know for sure without a doubt that something new has happened to you. The word of God coming into your spirit has caused a transformation. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're a backslider. This is a good time to get restored. Very simple. Pray this simple prayer with me and you will be saved. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I commit my entire existence to you. Write my name in the book of life. I vow to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, whether you feel it or not, a miracle of salvation has taken place. Locate the nearest living Bible teaching church. And if you are in New York, I welcome you to God's House of Refuge, number 80, Kodebido Street. If you are in Eket, locate any God's House of Refuge, anywhere Eket, Calabar, Ikote, Pene, and so on. But if you don't have God's House of Refuge anywhere there, locate a solid Bible believing church and tell them I sent you. Settle down there, get pastored, and grow from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Till I come your way again, same station, same time next week. God bless you, and have a great time. <laughs>